We're here today because there is a hearing in uh, City Hall, uh, an assembly oversight hearing of Commissioner uh, Lara, Insurance Commissioner Lara. And as all, you all know, we have a homeowner's crisis. People are getting dropped. People are getting run out of their insurance because it's too expensive. And unfortunately, Insurance Commissioner Lara has been worse than asleep, asleep at the switch. He's been in the back rooms making deals with the insurance companies. And we've now had a chance to look at the fine print of those deals. And those deals, unfortunately, don't live up to what he said they would live up to. Uh, there is a regulation that we're hoping the committee will get to today and ask the tough questions of Commissioner Lara. We have some homeowners who are going to talk. We're going to have here from Harvey Rosenfield, the, pres uh, the founder of Consumer Watchdog and the author of Prop 103, about detailed problems with these regulations. But just to suffice to say, these regulations have more loopholes in them than Alpine Lace Cheese. Uh, they have more loopholes than Alpine Lace Swiss Cheese. This is a, a real problem for the people of California because we are relying on these commissioner regulations to get people the coverage that they s were promised by the commissioner. The commissioner said time and time again, and as recently as two days ago, that he would deliver 85% coverage in wildfire risk areas to people who were previously uninsured in exchange for the right of insurance companies to raise rates based on these secret algorithms that our climate models. And yet, when you read the fine print of the regulation, or just the print of the regulation, that's not what they do. They allow these companies to increase coverage by 5%. Not to 85%, but 5% more. Or the companies can come in with a, an entirely new deal. Bottom line, these regulations are not going to get people more coverage but we're all going to be paying more in insurance premiums, a lot more in insurance premiums. In Florida, that's what happened. In Florida, the companies were forced to, uh, well, the, in Florida, the companies were allowed to raise rates based on climate models, and their premiums are two and a half times what we have here. So these regulations will not work to get people more coverage, and they will raise coverage for everyone in the state. We're going to hear from a couple of homeowners who've had this problem and are not being represented by the commissioner. And then we're going to go upstairs to room 1060, where the uh, Assembly Insurance Committee is, is, is meeting. And it's on the 10th floor. And it's also being live streamed, I believe, on the Assembly website. And we're going to ask the committee to ask the commissioner to answer this question. You said you were going to get people in wildfire areas, 85% coverage, and your regulation doesn't do that. It allows them to get off without expanding coverage but allows them to raise rates. How are you going to fix this problem? So first I want to bring up um, Bruce Breslow. Uh, I'll ask him to spell his name. He is from Chatsworth and had a horrible problem with his insurance company raising rates over a thousand percent in the last four years. Bruce. Thank you, Jamie. My name is Bruce Breslau. That's B-R-E-S-L-A-U. I live in a HOA community of 290 owners uh, in Chatsworth, California. Four months ago, farmers, our insurer of 20 years, dropped us. And our broker was forced to find coverage from what's called the non-admitted market. These are insurers that are not regulated. So if, if they go bankrupt and we have a claim, we're also out in the cold. The other side of that coin is we have 50% of the coverage we had last year. Last year we had 100% full coverage. Now we have half of that. However, the premium went from $349,000 to a whopping 1.7 million. That's a 400% increase. Since 2020, the premium has increased 1,000%. What this most recent increase does, it puts a five, just under $5,000 special assessment on each and every homeowner. Now, if you've got an emergency fund, $5,000 puts a good dent in that. But coming up with $5,000 in a middle class association is very difficult. And that's just for this year alone. Um, we've got a variety of uh, uh, people. We've got a diverse community, old, young, all uh, persuasions. And we've got many people who are on uh, fixed incomes, they're seniors. We've got people who are unemployed, still suffering from the strikes of a couple of years ago. So we're asking for some legislation. We need a law bringing these regulated uh, insurers back into our marketplace for premiums that are reasonable. And on our part, we also have to reasonably participate in home hardening and wildfire mitigation procedures. We've done that. We regularly have brush clearance. 
Uh, if we don't, we get fined by the fire department. So we have one civic organization looking out for our safety. Thank you, Los Angeles Fire Department. But we need consumer legislation to protect our financial interests. There are people that are profiting from this uh, unfortunate experience. Won't get into that right now. But we really do need this legislation. And not a couple of years from now, we need this help now. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Um, I would just, the legislation Bruce is talking about is legislation to require that insurance companies have to cover people who harden their homes. If you do the right thing and you harden your home, you should get a coverage with a real insurance policy. Because Commissioner Lara's plan it doesn't even require them to sell real insurance policies at that 5% rate. It, they can sell a fair plan like policy. We need real insurance policies for everyone who hardens their homes. That's the legislation that Bruce is talking about. I want to bring, home, uh, bring up Gigi Bannister, uh, who's from Crestline, and she'll tell you a little about her experience. Thank you for coming today. Uh, my name is Gigi Bannister. I live in Crestline in the San Bernardino Mountains. I'm a former veteran and firefighter, and I have lived up there for over 20 years. Uh, in, 19, er, in 2019, farmers called me, and I was forced into a California fair plan for fire coverage. I had to buy wraparound in, uh, a policy to cover everything else, and you can't get a fair plan without it. My premium doubled. I figured at least I was covered if something catastrophic happened, but that was not the case. Um, in 2023, uh, an ice dam broke loose from my roof and wrecked my deck. The wraparound insurer wouldn't cover my $40,000 claim, and then they canceled me. The commissioner, Laura, and the insurance department are doing nothing to help people like me, and it's got to stop. I take care of my 79-year-old husband, actor, uh, who is ill and takes care of, and, and I take care of my place. It's all on me, but I do the rest, uh, best I can to keep the brush cleared and to mitigate against fire. We should be able to get reasonable rate, uh, uh, reasonable priced uh, regular home insurance if we keep our places safe. Insurance companies should be forced to honor claims. Otherwise, what is insurance for? Commissioner Laura isn't doing his job. He's letting insurance companies get away with high risk premiums and he's letting them raise rates but not expand in the coverage. He's letting them use black, secret black box software to price you out of insurance and then uh, not guaranteeing people can get coverage at all. My insurance shouldn't cost me as much as my mortgage and it's time that uh, Laura did something about it. If I protect my face, place from fire, I should get traditional home insurance policy um, that uh, pays for my deck when it breaks. If he can't hold their feet to the fire, he should get out of the kitchen. I should say Gigi is a, a former firefighter and a veteran. And I want to bring up Harvey Rosenfield, uh, who is uh, another type of fighter, not a firefighter, <laughs> but an insurance fighter, who's the, pres uh, the founder of Consumer Watchdog and also the author of Insurance Reform Prop 103. And this regulatory proposal that Lara is proposing is going to do grave damage to this important insurance law that has saved consumers hundreds of billions of dollars in the 35 years it's been in effect. Harvey. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks, everybody, for showing up today. Uh, my name is Harvey Rosenfield. Um, I want to give you a little historical context here. 36 years ago, the insurance industry was destabilizing California with excessive rate increases, if you could even find it, because they've started pulling out of the state, just like they've been doing here in the last 18 months. Their, the goal here uh, in California is to escape the results of, the, of what the voters did back in 1988. Uh, our, Proposition 103 was pretty simple. It required insurance companies to open their books and justify in a, to the full public why they need a rate increase. And, they re, and the insurance commissioner has to review it, the public gets to review it, and they, it has to be a decision about whether it's justified or not. And they, so the essence of Proposition 103 was disclosure, transparency, and the ability of the public to have a say to make sure that the public didn't get screwed. And one of the provisions of Proposition 103 that I'm these days frequently criticized about 
is the provision that made the post an elected commissioner. Prior to Prop 103, the commissioners were appointed by the governor, it was always political patronage, and the industry got their person in to, to run the show. And, and uh, of course, nothing got done to protect the public, which is why we had to go to the ballot box in 1988. The insurance industry spent $63 million trying to defeat it. We waged a David versus Goliath grassroots battle, and we beat the insurance industry. And they've spent the last 36 years trying to undercut it in the courts, in the legislature, and before the commissioner. And they finally found an insurance commissioner willing to do the dirty work for him. I think it was, a, it was uh, the right thing to do to make the uh, ele position an elected post, but this commissioner has betrayed his oath of office. He has misled and lied to the public. And we're finally here to say, we're going to set the record straight. What's the battle about right now? The battle is this. For the last 18 months, the insurance companies have been pulling out of neighborhoods all over the state. The companies have said to the commissioner, we're not going to start selling insurance again unless you free us from the consumer protections of Proposition 103. The, the commissioner said, OK, one of the protections, they, one of the things they want to do now that they can't, they want to do that they cannot do now is use computer models and software and algorithms to, to jack up our premiums. They're not allowed to do that under Proposition 103. The commissioner has said he will allow them to do that. And as we speak here today, there's another proceeding that the commissioner is actually supposed to be at in Sacramento where there's a, a full-blown hearing on this proposal. The, the companies want to use models. We have submitted comments which are available to you because we, re as Jamie said, we read the fine print. We have people on staff who can look, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the industry's lawyers. We know what they're doing and it's a fraud. So what the insurance company, what the insurance commissioner has proposed to do, this is the quid pro quo for letting insurance companies uh, uh, use software models to jack up our rates. Uh, the the uh, insurance commissioner said to the public, I promise you I'm going to make the insurance companies come in and start selling to people who haven't been able to buy insurance coverage that they need for their homes for the last 18 months. Well, we took a look at the proposal the commissioner has made. It's riddled with loopholes. It is not going to ensure that everybody who needs coverage, who can't get it today, will get it today. It says, that the commissioner, you'll hear him, if you can even get him to show up in front of your cameras, you might hear him say, 85% of people in these distressed areas will be covered. Well, there's a loophole to that. The, the regulation actually says, uh, maybe 85, but it's okay if you just do five. And then there's another loophole that says, well, it's okay if you just do five, but if you can come up with some other way to show that you're going to sell insurance to the public, you could do that too. And then there's another loophole that says, you know, after two years, if you haven't been able to meet your commitment, that's okay. As long as you're trying, just let us know. And all of the proof of whether they're meeting the commitment is secret. These models that they want to use are secret. They want to prevent the public and consumers from, and media from having uh, the ability to look in on those models and see if they are going to be excessive, if they're going to be discriminatory. They're certainly untested. His regulation doesn't require any of the protections of Proposition 103. In fact, it eliminates the core protections of transparency and disclosure and uh, justification that are the quintessential elements of Proposition 103, which is why this is such an important, it's complicated, but it's so important, it's, it's going to affect every, whoops, it's going to, sorry about that, it's going to affect every policyholder and consumer in the state of California. Thank you. Um, so bottom line, Laura lied, Laura lied, Laura lied. Um, he's lied about a lot of things. One of the things he's lied about that Harvey didn't go through is that the requirement uh, to sell poli more policies, which is a very small requirement compared to what he said it would be, actually allows the companies to sell not a traditional homeowner's policy, an HO3 policy. They're allowed to sell a f fair plan policy to meet that commitment. And people already have access to fair plan as Gigi. So Bruce and Gigi, wildfire victims are not, wildfire survivors are not guaranteed anything. 
under this plan. But what we all are guaranteed is to pay more in insurance rates, and that's wrong. We've kept rates down in this state through tough regulation. We should not roll back that regulation, particularly when we're not getting anything in exchange for it in terms of more coverage. So I'm going to take questions from people here, and if people on the live line, live stream, want to ask questions, you can try to email me uh, or, or text me. Uh, my, 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 uh, I'm at the top of the press release, my phone, and I'll try to take it. But does anyone have a question? Yes. Just a devil's advocate question. Sure. So, um, can, you know, uh, climate change is raising losses. Insurance companies are having difficulties, um, you know, uh, paying these losses and, and meeting the, these prices. They're faced with re higher reinsurance costs. So how do you keep insurance companies whole and still you know, protect without without some kind of rate increases okay. when the risk goes up to the insurance All right. higher rates. All right, the question for people who didn't hear was wildfire, wildfires are threatening insurance companies and they're having to buy reinsurance. How do you keep rates low when they have to spend so much on reinsurance? Harvey, you want to deal with this? Okay, okay, sure. So there's a reason, first of all, the insurance companies, contrary to what uh, the, co the companies and the other PR folks are saying, under Prop 103, they can, anything they can justify in terms of an increase, they're allowed to get. They can get every penny uh, and, a, and a fair profit. Oh, oh, look, look at the camera. Sorry, sorry. sorry about that. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll start again. Under Proposition 103, contrary to what you've been told or may hear from the insurance industry and its allies, insurance companies are entitled to every rate increase they're entitled, uh, they can justify by opening their books and showing they need it. In fact, they're even entitled to a fair profit, which is why California has been more profitable for home insurance companies than any other state in the nation over the last decades. So what they cannot do, and they're not allowed to do, is pass through the cost of reinsurance. Let me just tell you what that expense is. That's, an, that's another prohibited expense under Prop 103, prohibited by prior commissioners, Insurance companies buy insurance themselves to back up their own coverage. And in the past, no commissioner has ever allowed insurance companies to pass through the expense of reinsurance to the policyholders because reinsurance is controlled by a small number of big global firms. It's wildly unstable in its pricing. It's not regulated like rates are supposed to be in here in, here in California. And the result would be 50% increases off the bat if they're allowed to pass through reinsurance. So that is, that's another issue that Commissioner Lara is saying he's going to capitulate to the industry and allow them to pass through the cost of reinsurance. Well, you, the question is, well, is, it, is that fair to insurance companies? They've survived for 36 years covering the cost of reinsurance themselves. Why do they suddenly need it? They don't. They're just, they want it. They're demanding it. Wouldn't it be great if we could go to the IRS and say, you know, I'm project, I'm using some computer software to project that I'm not going to have to pay any taxes in the next few years, and I want to pass through some expenses, uh, uh, write off some expenses that I, I couldn't do before, like, uh, like martini cocktails at lunch. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about insurance companies that were subject to a stringent regime over the, over the last 36 years one elected commissioner after another holding the line and now suddenly the line has the dam has burst and they're getting everything they've asked for and a case I'll, be made for um, for speeding up the the uh, approval of well, let me take let me take this uh, okay we we, Sorry, we are we are all in favor of speeding up the rate review process but we're not in in favor of cutting out the intervener uh, we, are, we are good with, with, with a quicker timeline, but unfortunately, Commissioner Lara's bulletin that he issued allows for rates to be in effect, take effect 60 days after they, uh, they are filed. And that would unfortunately cut out the intervener because we have 45 days to intervene and he has 15 days to approve or deny it. He doesn't want us in these cases, and I'll tell you why. State Farm is a good example. State Farm is asking, had a 20% rate hike last year. They wanted more, we got them down a little bit. And uh, now they're asking for 30% increase. But the regulations say they need to do a 9% decrease, literally. That's what, the, that's what the algorithm that they use is, puts in 9% decrease. But they say, oh, we're paying too much in reinsurance costs. And we're, our reserve is too low. We need a 30% increase, even though the algorithm that they use to determine it doesn't allow it. Well, we looked in their reinsurance costs and we figured it out. They're paying, the state company is paying the parent company for reinsurance, and they're overpaying. So they're upstreaming their profits through reinsurance to their, to, to their parent company. And 
and drying up their reserves, and then they're going to come in and ask for a 30% rate hike. If State Farm's California company can charge its parent company for reinsurance and just tack that on to the consumer, then we're going to have 30% rate increases every year. It's not fair. And the commissioner knows it's not fair. He doesn't care. He's giving in to the companies because he wants them back. And somehow he believes, if I give them everything I want, they're going to come back. Well, I'm telling you, they're not coming back. State Farm has said it does not need to insure one more policyholder. And in that 30% rate hike application, they say we're actually going to cover less policyholders. And by the way, we tried to intervene in that State Farm rate hike. And Commissioner Lara denied our intervention, but we're... He allowed us intervention. He, he allowed our intervention, but yeah. he denied it initially, and we yeah. refiled, and he allowed it. So if we're not there, this commissioner is going, to, is going to raise rates. And we know because we've saved $6 billion in 20 years intervening in cases. And if you look at this commissioner, when he's involved and there's no intervener involved, 97% of the rate that is originally requested is, is, is recovered by the company. He's only knocking it down 3%. When we're involved in a homeowner's insurance rate in, 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 height through interventions, it goes down to 62% of the original rate requested. So if we're not there watching him, he's just going to continue the raise rates. And his bulletin is a way to get us out of this. So the commission, there's nothing standing in the way of the companies getting their rate hikes. Can we get a little bit more from PG and from Bridge? What were you paying per month, per month for your uh, homeowner's insurance before you were dropped? What are you paying oh. now? Did your insurance, did you said farmers, did they say they were dropping you because of fire risk? Just a little more detail on that. Well, as I said, uh, I'm in an HOA, so a lot of the uh, details uh, an HO, a homeowner in an HOA doesn't get. The, the, the board and the uh, management company see all that and make decisions. Our insurance last year was built into our, our HOA cost. So um, the premium of $349,000, if you divide that by 290 units, it looks like there was about $1,200 per unit, or about $100, maybe 20% of that HOA cost. Now when we have... Sorry, so for, uh, you paid about $1,200 a year for... Once again, it was built into our, it was built into our, H, uh, our homeowners association fee, our monthly fee. Yeah. Now with $1.7 million, and you divide that by 290, you get something close to $6,000. Uh, homeowners associations can't raise their fees more than 20%. So they have to do a special assessment, meaning that due for this special circumstance, each homeowner now has to pay an additional $4,700 just for the insurance for this year. A year. Uh, well, plus the $1,200 that's built into the HOA fee, that hasn't gone down. So it's close to, you know, $6,000. And I live in a, 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 a unit that's 1,100 square feet. This is not a McMansion. <laughs> this is a middle class, great community. Did they say they were dropping to the fire risk? That our broker said farmers was getting out, due to, uh, and it, getting out of any wildfire areas and getting out of HOAs. I came to the mountain in 2003, uh, April of 2003. In October of 2003, we had the uh, old fire and we were evacuated for 11 days. After that, farmers stayed with us. We were so surprised because my husband's family, our farmers used to be farmers uh, brokers for decades. And so we stayed with farmers for 20 years. Uh, both in Long Beach and then we transferred up into Crestline. After the fires, however, uh, moved forward and we're all of a sudden faced in 2019, farmers it informs us they're dropping us. It's not for lack of payment. It's not because we didn't keep our home uh, properly. We have a tiny cabin uh, and uh, you have to go outside to change your mind. Is that small? <laughs> But, uh, and we're surrounded by trees. We live in a forest, okay? But I managed to keep it according to uh, specifications for both the county and the fire and the state. 2019, they drop us. My broker, thank God, uh, she was able to get us another insurance carrier uh, besides uh, CalFair. Because, let's face it, the reason we have insurance is not to protect and replace our property values. The reason we have insurance is to pay the dividends to investors in the insurance companies. It has nothing to do with us. 
They force us to have insurance on our mortgages. We pay over half of our mortgage on insurance. When it goes up, our mortgage goes up because it's in escrow. So we don't have a choice in the matter. Uh, my uh, mortgage is now over $2,000 a month. 1,600 of it is, the, uh, is, is insurance, uh, in the insurance escrow. So I, I don't know how you call that fair, but it sure as hell not the American way, and it's not the American dream. My husband and I dreamed of being, uh, working in the film industry all our lives, and then being veterans, and then uh, retiring to our cabin in Crestline, which is what we do every summer. I get rid of the, uh, the uh, uh, pine needles and the trees and a trim them all by myself. My husband has Parkinson's and dementia. He can't do it, right? So then in the snow, snowmageddon, we had snow up seven, eight, eight, uh, seven to eight feet on our doors, front and back. They broke in our windows, the, the ice, and then the ice dam came off of the, the roof and split my deck. And the insurance company said, no, you see, it's not got a roof on it, and therefore we're not going to cover it, and therefore, and there was all these cross-purpose uh, uh, exclusions and inclusions in, in the policy, which I would have read if they had provided me the policy. But they neither provided me the policy, didn't return phone calls, didn't file a, uh, the denial claim in a timely manner, all of which is against California Insurance Code. First name G-I-G-I, -G -I, last name B-A-N-N-I-S-T-E-R. One N, you slide down two ends as a force. <laughs> <laughs> so $2,000 a month is your mortgage, 1600 of that is insurance? And what did it used to be? Uh, 1600 About, uh, what was it? Was it like 600 yeah. 600 for the insurance. insurance. Any more questions? Yeah. Are insurance companies getting involved in housing? Are they, are they becoming developers? <laughs> no. I, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I can say something yeah. to that. They're, they're not, as far as we know, I mean, apart from investments, but I'll tell you this, insurance companies are determining where people can live in California. So they're de deciding who can build what where because of the decisions that insurance companies make, like Gigi was just saying, about what you have to pay, you end up having to live where the insurance companies tell you to live. Um, there is a, I'll tell you one, one thing the insurance companies are doing is investing in oil companies and fossil fuel companies. And those fossil fuel companies are funneling the climate change, which is funding the wildfires, which are threatening the insurance company's interest. We called at the beginning of uh, Lara's administration for him to require all insurance companies to, uh, to disclose their underwriting of fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. who, is, who, is, who is insuring Aliso Canyon, for example? Who's insuring the Keystone Pipeline? Who's in, because the, and the company and he denied that petition and hasn't done anything on that. Uh, we we need to actually punish the companies that invest in fossil fuels somehow, force them to pay for mitigation perhaps. And that's something we're going to consider with the legislature next year because if they're funding the climate change that's causing a threat to their industry, that's not healthy. Anybody got anything else? Yeah. He's here. He's here. And he's, he's here. By the way, they, there was the, the Michael Soller, who's there, promised on radio uh, and KCBS when, when we asked to debate Lara, he said, well, you can come and, and testify at the hearing on September 17th and Lara will hear you. Well, Lara's not going to hear you because he's at this hearing. So he is not listening to the public and he was not present at even the two pub other public hearings on these issues previously. He has not listened to the public. He's not at the hearings. It's a disgrace. He claims I'm going around listening to the public, but when it comes time to look at his proposals and hear the public's comments about his proposals, he's nowhere to be seen.